But we know from the Bible that unity is the greatest revival power on the planet. It is greater than signs and wonders, which when people see a sign and a wonder, you know, or prophecy, they fall on their face. They say, surely God is in this place. Many people come to Christ through signs and wonders and the miracles. But according to the scripture itself, when we attain unity, it has the power to cause the whole world to believe. John 17. I am not asking on behalf of these alone. Verse 20. In other words, Jesus, and I will say this, like I've studied the prayers of the Bible. I've, I, you know, when I was about 40 years old, I was praying and I was thanking God for how many prayers of mine he'd answered. And all of a sudden, out of my spirit came these words. You have answered so many of my prayers. I'm going to give the rest of my life to answering yours. And I began to study what did God pray about? Like, I know what I pray about. Oh, please bless my kids and help this and save that. And, you know, I I mean, I I, I have, and help, you know, a lot of helps. But what does God pray about? What's God, because he's ever living to make intercession for us. What's he praying for? So you start looking for the prayers of God. We missed that chapter, Wesley, in our Bible. We missed the prayers of God. Oh, theophanies. Okay, yeah, the God sightings. You're right. Okay. And the prayers of Jesus. You're right. We got them there. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I just momentary brain fart. Okay. Uh, But Jesus prays. So I prayed John 17 for years and years and years. And I have to tell you this, that this is probably the most difficult thing to keep focused on this prayer. It's so much easier Uh, to do the first commandment than the second. But when Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment in the law? He said, you tell me, you shall love the Lord your God. You've answered correctly. And then Jesus himself added this. Why did Jesus put that with it? He said, the second is like it that you will love your neighbor as yourself. So it's, it's absolutely tied in, in a continuum to commandment one because if John, like in the words of uh, John the be- uh, Beloved in, in first John or second John, if you don't love your brother who you do see, how can you love God who you don't see? So the acid test of how we're doing at commandment one is how we're doing at commandment two. But I'm going to read what he prayed. I'm not asking on behalf of these alone. In other words, not just the disciples in the room, but for those who will believe in me through their word. Through every believer that has come to faith in Jesus through the apostolic witness of the early church and the letters they wrote, which have become the New Testament, then what does he pray? This is the prayer of God. God for his church, that they all may be one. Just as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. So we are talking the oneness of the Godhead. We're not talking similitude. We're not talking, you know, we're talking a substantive oneness that is like what the Godhead shares. That, that blows my mind. He's praying that we would be one like they are one. How are we doing? And you know, the most common thing I hear, as soon as we say, well, if we're walking with this denomination or that brother or this sister or that nation or whatever, you know, well, haven't you heard? I, I mean, bad news seems to be on the mouths of the church more than the good news. The prayers of the devil, who's the accuser of the brethren, seems to be on the lips of believers more than the prayer of Jesus is on in the lips of the believers. That they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, so they may also be in us. Why? 
Why does Jesus pray this prayer? Out of all the things he could have prayed for his disciples before he went to the cross. Why does he pray this prayer? He prays that they would be one so that, okay, dependent clause following, so that the world may believe that you sent me. This is revival power. When we become one, the entire world will believe that the Father sent Jesus. And then he goes on to say, The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, so that they may be one. You already possess what it takes to be one with your brother, with your sister, with your with your other believers with other uh, denominations you possess it because god has given you past tense his glory so that you can be one just as we the trinity are one i in them and you in me that they may be perfected in unity so that and he says it again so that the world may know that the Father sent Jesus for the remission of sins. There is one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. You know, so that the world would know that you sent me and know that you love them. Just as you love me. This will unleash the love of God on the planet like nothing and I encourage you to pray this prayer every single day of your life pray with Jesus co-labor with Jesus and it's a prayer that every Jew prays twice a day even without the New Testament uh, because they pray the Shema the Shema is the title of a prayer that Jews recite twice daily, every morning and every evening, Orthodox Jews. This prayer, often considered the most important prayer in Judaism, is taken from Scripture and is composed of Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. That's what proceeds, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength. You have to know who he is, who you're loving, who you're beholding in order to actually be transformed into that image. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and all your might. These words I command you today shall be on your heart. From the inside out, you shall teach them diligently to your children uh, and talk of them when you sit down in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. They shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Oneness is the very essence of God, of the Trinity, of his nature. It is the central thing that every Jew understands about Jesus, which is why they picked up stones to stone him when he said, I and the Father are one. And oneness is what Jesus prays for, for his body. Okay. Many years ago, it's somewhat mystical. I, 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 man, many years ago, I remember um, I had this vision. I was in the middle of a worship time, and I had this vision. And in the vision, I, I, there was a bride. It was the bride of Christ. It was white garments. It was a, it was a beautiful bride. And um, it, I, I saw it at first from afar. It was like, you know like a wide angle vision and then all of a sudden in the vision it just began to zero in zero and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and smaller until finally I saw myself and it was as though I were one stitch on the bride on the bridal dress I was one stitch in the garment you know I, and I, I think it was pictorial depicting I'm just one small part of a much larger uh, reality and I, you know, I could see myself there and I was worshiping and I had my hands out like this and my hands though were connected to two other people. And at first it went in so um, zoomed that I could only see myself. And as it began to zoom out, I was holding hands with, on, on either side of me with two people I didn't like. <laughs> two fellow Christians that I had problems with and I was, you know, quite, uh, uh, quite confident in my prophetic discernment about them. And, uh, <laughs> and so 
And so what happened was, uh, you know, and, and the Lord began to speak to me. You know, your hand cannot say to the foot, I don't need you. You cannot separate yourself from the reality that I see about the bride of Christ. You cannot separate that. It exists. It's real. It's as real. The heavenly realm is as real as the earthly realm. And I'm praying that the earthly realm gets it together like it should be in the heavenly realm. And that's how I taught you to pray. This is what I pray, but that's what I taught you to pray.